Chapter 25 The day after the festivals would be our last class, where we would become interns. Before riding the bus, Midnight walked past me, saying, Era Era. Too bad. I had a good reward for you. But you lost it. She teased me on purpose. I replied, Don't worry. Only high expectations lead to disappointment. She narrowed her eyebrows. Your expectations were low? I nodded. Even after the way I whispered to your ear, she said, putting a hand on her hip. Rejection is nothing personal, I replied. Well, keep your reward for yourself. The only thing I want now is to take a nap. Midnight reached for her skin-applied suit, rubbed it a bit, and said, I can put you to sleep fast. The hormones of teenagers made me imagine things. I closed my eyes, almost imagining that I was sleeping with her. If someone blamed me, I'd ask them not to imagine a pink elephant. They do it anyway because that's how the brain works. Anyway, I'll have a nice talk with you in class tomorrow, she spoke. We then rode the bus. Taking the last seat, I closed my eyes and took a nap. Very soon, I found myself at my house. After greeting my family, I went to my room, took a few hair strands, and offered them to Orochimaru. Then, I offered a hair strand of Mirio in the Channel 1 since there were other worlds of superheroes. I did the same in Level 2 worlds, since there were some advanced medical techniques and cloning technologies. I then asked no one to bother me before I went to sleep. I woke up around 4 a.m. when the alarm rang. I brushed my teeth, went back to my room, and opened the system. I got a load of messages about Mirio's DNA, with people asking me if it's really given the ability to become untouchable. Many left offers. But there was someone who caught my attention, Underworld Joker. If that's true, then tell me more about it. I'll give you 500k for it, 700k for exclusive rights. You know, what's the biggest cheat in dimensional trading? It's not getting VIP privileges, and it's not having good stuff. It's being rich before getting the system. Orochimaru, Joker, and those from other worlds who had cooperation selling drugs, if they got their hands on the system, then hundreds of thousands of coins, if not millions, would be in their hand from the start. Not to mention they could have access to their world's rarest resources and sell them. There was another message from Orochimaru. Hey, hey, Brad, we had a history of dealing. Why are you offering that in the market? Orochimaru was my passive income source, and I have been gaining a lot out of him recently. I want to see how pricey it is. I don't want anyone to take advantage of me. You think I'm anyone? You're the anyone. Sweet. How much did they offer you for that? 800k, 1 million for exclusive rights. They have cloning technologies. I believe so. Listen, do you know what's the easiest way to get someone's power in the system? Buy it. Yes, but think about it. You could sell your own knowledge, or force someone to sell it. Even bloodlines. Superpowers should be no different. You force someone to sell it. I believe in your case. You can't do that. You're saying, give me the exclusive rights, and we'd make a passive income out of it. How much would it take me to wait? One year for the specific cells to mature as I won't clone humans as it takes too many resources. One year is too much of a time to wait. Why? You could clone others. That's different. To clone the quirk itself and to clone humans and milk them are different things. In your brother's case, all I needed was to make a farm for his hair. And it worked. For that saliva, it's also easy. But for that guy to have each cell travel through everything, it means that I'd need to make a lot of adjustments. Not only that, but there is the potential to control which part to phase with. Doing it with movement requires training. But then, it's the ultimate attack and defense. This makes it better. Listen, I've got a better idea. What? No exclusive rights. But you get it anyway. You want to sell it to everyone who offers a high price. You have more hair, right? Yep. And I plan to train during the next time, so I won't wait for a year. Let's say there is a crisis coming. So, how about this? I'll offer you 1.2 million coins, exclusive rights, and no passive income shared. I'm not about to wait for one year, and there were quirks worth selling more than Mirios. So to take a huge sum of money and use it to prepare for the next couple of years, it would be worthy for me. With 1.2 million coins, I could level up and prepare to face all for one. I could buy expensive stuff and resell it in my world, earning money. I went back to the Joker asking him to raise the price as I got 1.3 million for exclusive right. He refused and offered me 1 million, thinking I was bluffing. Well, he wasn't wrong. I went back to Orochimaru. Deal, I said. What? No negotiating, not discussing with others. Is there something off? There are people with more broken powers. I shrugged. 
I'm sure you won't give me a bad offer, or else, you know, I can become a crazy scientist myself. Besides, I'm getting high passive income from paralyzing enzymes. Yeah, they sell 20k each. And they are getting higher in demand. Earning a few million in a year won't be trouble. See? Now, let's make an exclusive contract. Plus 1.2 million. Achievement unlocked. Achievement unlocked. Congratulations, you leveled up to level 3. Wait, I just leveled up to level 3. My heart skipped a beat, and my hand clenched into my pocket. I entered the chat of the level 3 worlds, and I saw what they had for sale. Apparently, they were very advanced worlds that used magic. Their technology seemed to be more advanced than Earth. Magic spells for sale 2k. Selling my magic knowledge of the second circle 10k. Magic circles guide 20k. Teleportation spell 30k. Magic armor 50k. Magic sword 12k. Quantum magic spaceship 3 million. There was even a spaceship that could take you to another planet with a speed that surpassed the light. I could understand how things were pricey, even though I believed the cultivation worlds were stronger. Cultivation was about gaining power to break out of the world. Magic was about breaking the rules of the world and manipulating them. Other interesting stuff was here. Zampacta for sale 300k. I inwardly told the guy to fuck himself up. Soul power of 7th seat 400k. Another fuck off. Shaking my head, I thought about better things to spend my money on, such as more chakra from channel 0, maybe bloodlines, and resources. Of course, I thought about buying a few spells. Plus one year worth of magic knowledge of second circle mage. He still had over 1.2 million thanks to his passive income. He went to other channels and he bought a few stuff and techniques. Plus eight heaven pills. Plus high grade spiritual stone. Body enhancement 1000 years old drink. Plus Chunin worth chakra. Why I didn't find a Jonin selling it? Don't they want to level up? Anyway, I continued shopping. Plus lightning jutsu, lightning net. Plus ninjutsu, body flicker jutsu. Plus ninjutsu, transformation jutsu. Plus ninjutsu, shadow clone jutsu. In total, I had spent around 300k, but on the good hand, I had enough money and resources to cultivate. Now, for wuxia techniques. Since I was at earth level, there were techniques that suited my level. Sun beam, turn chi into a sun laser beam. Heaven leap, leap high in the air with chi, snake footwork. Increases the speed by two folds. Inner cultivation energy 10 years, that's another 40k coins. I then looked at the storage, and I selected the knowledge of second circle mage, absorbing it. My head hurt. I started getting new information. When it ended, I learned more about magic. In the world of the magician who sold me magic, magicians were ranked between 10th circle to 1st circle, with the difference of the strength and the ability to cast spells between each rank. The strength difference could be said two folds. I learned a few low-level spells, how to move light things with my mind, and how to draw magic circles, and basics and all. All I need now. With the mana I had now, I could do something. Around the mana in my heart, a circle formed. I tried to form the second, but I failed. Guess the first circle is good. Also, I have a generous amount of mana anyway. I opened my hand, the mana in it drawing a circle, transforming into what seemed like fire. I shook my head, deciding not to focus on magic for now. It could prove useful someday though. I looked at the other stuff I had in the storage with the option to absorb, getting chakra and the ninjutsu absorbed into my brain. I had to turn off the system because my head started to hurt from consuming all of the knowledge. When I checked my phone, I found that it was already 8 a.m. My heart skipped a beat, thinking that I skipped school. There was a message from Nijire. Hey, wanna hang out later? You skipped school too. No, silly. Didn't you hear the teacher? She said we'd have two days off after the sports festival. Oh, I see. Weren't you paying attention? I had paid attention to midnight when she said that, just not to what she said. I believe that I wasn't the only one as I doubted other guys thought the same. Anyway, I was happy. In addition, for enough money to train for two years, it meant that I had complete two days to train. The next year will be the introduction of the villains. So that means that I had to prepare for them. Forget about that. Let's meet later in the gym. Okay. XXX. I was at the gym, sitting in the corner after finishing a quick workout, waiting for Nijire to finish. Since we had a few days to spare, I didn't mind wasting a bit of time. Since I'm spotting her squats, there was nothing such as wasting time. By the way, there's something that had been bothering me, Nijire said, coming next to me and rubbing her head with the towel, 
you never gave off the vibe of a martial arts master. What do you mean? I asked. She grabbed her phone, saying, I've edited the footage of your fights with Mirio, and I've looked through the internet. What you showed was something that used to be called only movie martial arts. Most who claimed to use them in real life would be deemed as frauds. She then turned her phone to me, showing the footage where I flipped Mirio upside down by slightly touching his legs and holding his wrist, then forced him to hit the ground. You really want to know? I asked. She nodded. I activated my Sharingan, my eyes turning red. Pointing to my eyes, I said, this is what happens when I pour my energy here. I get eyes that are able to copy any movement, and I've been binging martial arts movies lately. Better explaining than, I bought them from another dimension. So this is what happens when you direct your energy to your eyes? She asked, and I nodded. She added, amazing, but this makes me wonder, what happens if you poured your energy somewhere else? What do you mean? I asked, her cheeks blushing more. With a wry smile, she pointed at my crotch saying that. I looked at my boner. I then started coughing violently. The way she said that was innocent, yet it wasn't. I don't want to risk it. Come on. I want to see you try, she said. I rubbed my neck. I knew if I pushed this now, I'd end up thinking for the rest of my life if she was hinting something physical with me, and I'd regret it each time. At the same time, this girl simply never held back her curiosity. It's a public place. I'll show you some other time, I replied. It's a deal then, she said, extending her pinky finger to me. Holding back my urge to chuckle, I extended my pinky finger to her and shook it. That action was so cute that I wanted to hug her and eat her right now. Anyway, I'll be leaving for now. I replied as I landed a kiss on her cheek. Raising her eyebrow, she asked, is there something up? Yeah, I've discovered a few techniques with my aura, and I want to try. Can I watch, she asked. I shrugged. It's not like I'm going to keep them secret anyway. I then thought for a bit and said, let's move somewhere isolated. I was in a nearby forest with Nijire, staring at a big rock in front of me. I was quite curious to test the techniques that I had bought from the system, especially the Wuxia ones. Let's start with the sunbeam. I raised two fingers, and they started vibrating before glowing yellow. Don't tell me it's a naughty technique, Nijire said, quite blushing as she looked at my hand. I get it, it vibrates too much. I aimed at the rock. Better be worth the money. A finger-sized golden beam left my fingers, flying at high speed, hitting the rock, piercing it, making a one-meter diameter hole. I was certain that if I reached heaven level, I could destroy a house-sized rock with it. Also, this technique took about a quarter of my energy. Look, the hole stretched too much, I pointed, trying to joke. Instead of laughing, she opened her eyes widely. Your aura can do that? It's not that amazing. You can destroy a house, right? She nodded. Nijire. Hold me if it fails, I said, before squatting. I wanted to see the heaven leap technique. Let's just try a small version. What do you mean? Concentrating my chi through the meridians of my legs. The next second, I knew, I was 40 meters high in the air. Did I put too much chi? I was certain because when I looked down, my heart almost jumped out of my chest. I didn't know if I could handle this or not. Even if I could, the fall would be painful. I'm dumb. I should have tested the fall damage first. Luckily. As I fell a few meters, Nijire got behind me and held me from my shoulders, helping me to land slowly. The feeling of her chest crushing on my back gave me weird butterflies. It felt better than hugging her. Maybe I should let her spot me. That was scary, I said. Putting her hands on her hips, she pouted. You think? Try seeing that from my perspective. I really thought you were going to die. What would have happened if you went to test this alone and fell down and got your leg broken? Go to the hospital? I replied. Your safety isn't a joke, you know, she said, that makes you a bad boy. My heart pumped happily hearing that. Deciding to change the topic, I said, you got a point. Wanna eat ice cream? There was no point in testing other SK asterisk LLS in front of her. She smiled and nodded. Chapter 26 I opened my eyes when the alarm rang, my body glowing in a golden aura as I had just broken through to Earth Realm Level 2. I stood up, finding my chi had increased along with my physical strength. The cultivation energy that I bought worked as a way to push my breakthrough and make it faster. I missed a date because of this, and used a heavenly elixir. Still, its effect hasn't worn out. So I could keep going on. After changing my clothes to the school uniform, I went down to the kitchen, finding my family having breakfast. I decided to join them this time. Eat more. Mom put more meat on my plate. You'll need this. Ah, thanks, I replied. Do you need some allowance? Father asked. I shook my head. 
After entering the hero school and displaying my power at the sports festival, I was getting a bit of special treatment. At first, I thought that my Neto was going to get jealous, but instead, he gave me his share of meat and spoke. Is there any business deals around? He asked, thinking about his balls. Replying, I said, maybe, this time. Since I had gotten the transformation jutsu, I could change my look and make shady deals with shady people and sell diamonds that were worthless rocks and mana and cultivation worlds for profit. I couldn't do that with my legal identity since it had already been used and I didn't want to bring attention to me. But I couldn't live as poor until I become a true hero. Mineta smiled, his eyes tearing up. My words to him seemed like finding water to a man lost in the desert. After finishing my food, I took the school bus, went to my class, and took my seat. Many eyes were on me. Midnight entered. The first thing she said was, Kenshiro, stand and face the wall. All I could do was ask, what did I do now? Her blue eyes scanned me, and her lips made an evil smirk. To dare to give up like that after I promised a reward. She said with a bland look in her eyes. Did I hurt her pride to take things personally? If so, then I made it. I shrugged. I mean, what's the point? I couldn't beat him without fouling him. It's my loss. You flipped him in the air, broke his wrist, and fixed it when he asked. And now you're saying you gave up because you wouldn't win if not for the knocking out rule? She asked. Her sharp eyes caught my true intention. Somehow, that made me feel glad. You should think twice before trying to fool me with AS asterisk XY act. What's the point? We were just having fun. I stretched my arms and went to the wall, leaning on it. I looked at the teacher, smiling that I got under her skin. My smile confirmed her thoughts. She took a deep breath, and she said, let's be professional now. She then wrote on the board the number of offers we got for the internship. Nijire got most of them. Then me, then Tamaki, and then someone else. I got 200 offers, while Nijire got 1,000. We sent you the offers to your houses and the contacts info of the heroes that would like to have you as their intern, Midnight said. Then she looked at me, Kinshiro, you can sit down. I expected more for a punishment? I sarcastically said as I walked to my seat and grabbed my chair. Fufufu. She closed her eyes. Giggling, she played with her whip and replied, Someone is naughty, isn't he? But we don't do this kind of thing in school. A few giggles echoed in the class. I held my urge to clap for her. She just made me sound like a masochist begging for punishment. But I didn't take it personally. Given how good she looked, I didn't mind giving it a try. Thank God no one in this class can read my mind. I thought while pretending to frown. Anyway, take your seat. She said, now class, today you are going to pick your hero's name. Remember, you can always change it later. And so, we had a class to pick our hero names. I wasn't really fond of the names. Just kin. That didn't sound right either as it reminded me of. Forget it. I don't want to say it. In the end, my hero's name became Kinshiro for now. After the end of the class, I had a small chat with Nijire, her asking me where I'd go. I ended up saying some far place. My intent was to go to a place where I could do business, where there are criminals with strong quirks and money. I'd examine the offers of my internship and look through the locations where the heroes were and if there was any rumors about organized crime. I know. Some may think that I was bad by doing business with shady people. But if we followed this logic, then heroes weren't working for innocent people either. When I asked Nijire about where she's planning to spend her internship, she said she'd have to go under a strong female hero preferably. Then we gave each other a goodbye kiss until after the vacation. I promised her to contact her, and then we went our separate ways. After reaching my home, I opened my email on my smartphone. The UA had already sent me the heroes that wanted me as an intern. I scrolled down, and one of them caught my eyes. Night Eye. He was the previous sidekick of All Might. Most importantly, there is organized crime going around his city, and the police were barely doing anything about it. Maybe I could exchange diamonds and cheap jewels for a huge profit. I thought as I needed a way to bring money from the system to reality. What's the point of training all along and not being able to enjoy life for a second? I know, I have a girlfriend, but I didn't want to spend time having dates in cheap places. I sent an email to Night Eye saying that I have considered coming to his agency during the vacation. A few minutes later, I got a reply from him, telling me to come to his agency by tomorrow and grab my staff with me. I then started packing up my stuff, humming a song. To me, it didn't feel like a serious training period. More like a business trip to me. Chapter 27 I stopped in front of a five-story building, not so huge, but it looked fancy. Apparently, not all heroes show off their property. I looked at my phone, verifying the address. 
making sure that I got it right. Taking a few deep breaths, I got in. My heart beat faster than usual. My first time being an intern. Why do I have this feeling? I thought, feeling my stomach uncomfortable, hating the working life already. It reminded me of my previous life, where I had spent many years working as an intern, just to get experience. Many seniors would use the interns to load them with work. And the interns, like puppies, would comply. But in the end, the jobs would go to the one destined for it. If they expect you to do more than your job, don't. My hand clenched into fists, remembering that I didn't get a job until I quietly quit and played poker with the employer for a few days. I hate internships. I thought as I entered the main hall, finding a woman with blue skin, dark short hair, and a pretty figure of 167 centimeters standing there. I stared at her for a bit. Her costume, after all, was a bit lewd as it consisted of a dark blue top, which ended on the top part of her chest, exposing her blue skin from the stomach and the underside of her breasts. I had to say, one should love the hero industry. I wonder if there are people who fap while watching hero clips. I wondered internally. She smiled and tilted her head. Oh, it's you again. A familiar soft voice said. Another was a blonde boy, who happened to be Mirio. We got to the same place, he looked at me, and he stretched his lips with his fingers to a smile. What a happy surprise. You're here. I asked, pretending to be surprised. It wasn't surprising at all. In the canon show from my previous life, Mirio would come to work under night I during the vacations. If you think about it, there should be other classmates of mine who should be here. Nijair should be under the dragon hero, as for Tamaki, his teacher should be some fat guy. The blue woman looked at my baggage before saying, you must be Kinshiro, the new intern. This is Mirio. I believe you two are familiar. He just arrived before you not so long ago. And you are? I asked her. She sighed, saying, am I that unknown? Even though I worked for the previous sidekick of All Might. Bubble Girl. I asked, trying to jog my memory from the show. She smiled and clapped her hands. Quite smart. Both of you. Sir Knight, I will see you in a couple of minutes. I turned to Mirio, asking, How's your hand? It was healed by a kiss from the grandma healing girl, he said, addressing the healing staff of our school. How about you? I bet you got into troubles for giving up. Nothing like that, I replied, scratching my chin remembering how I made Midnight angry that I lost on purpose. I mean, it's not like there was big money on the line to win in the first place. Scratching your chin isn't an innocent man's reply, smiled Mirio as he pointed at me. If scratching your chin was something in the court, I bet the crime rate would drop. Come on. I'm just joking, he replied. The bubble girl picked up a phone, saying, um, yes, sir. I'll send him right away. The bubble girl looked at me and said, Sir Knight, I wants to see you both. I shrugged and walked into the door to a nice office. Standing next to the office was a thin man with a height of two meters. He had green hair with a few yellow strands, yellow eyes behind the glasses, coated in a gray suit with a red necktie. Seeing his hero costume, I couldn't help but secretly respect him. A simple man who can do a simple job with simple attire. Hello, Mirio said, lifting his hand. You must be Kinshiro and Mirio, said Night Eye, before pointing to Mirio. You are funny. He then pointed to me, and you have the potential to be funny. Good God, no. I blinked twice. I nodded. You didn't get my name wrong. Ha uh ha. -huh. You're funny. Mirio said. He watched us on TV. He can't get it wrong. I rolled my eyes. If it weren't for my cultivation improving my mental clarity, then I would have turned to be in a bad mood because of the transportation. Mirio was lucky. Night I patted his glasses. You could leave your baggage to Bubble Girl. As for now... I'm going to give you a small test. If you're retired, then I understand. If you don't mind me getting naked, so be it, said Mirio, smiling. You can wear your hero attire, replied Knight I. It's made of your hair, so you could use it. That's right, replied Mirio, walking back with his baggage. I turned to him, asking nicely, can you take my baggage too? You won't wear your hero costume, he asked. I shook my head, it's just a normal leather jacket and pants. Not very fancy, I see. Commented Knight I, it's preferable to have an iconic attire, so that people could recognize you. I looked at him, saying, that's rich, coming from you. Knight I smiled slightly, and he replied, well, I'm more about practical leadership and guidance. Compared to the impression Knight I gave in the anime, he was acting way nicer. Was it because I wasn't Midoriya and I didn't get one for all? Well, I didn't mind. Now, you have 20 moves. Try to attack me without causing damage. Am I allowed to use my quirk? I asked, not daring to underestimate him. 
He, after all, could dodge Midoriya's moves easily with his foresight. You couldn't expect to overwhelm him with speed alone. After all, when it comes to martial arts, having the ability to pre-react was way different than to post-react. The former would let you dodge a bullet, but the latter wouldn't. Sure, I could win if I put him in the corner and use some jutsu, lightning net, to bring him down. This reminds me. I should press someone from the One Piece world to sell me knowledge on how to train hockey. But those guys barely show in the market and the demand on them is too high that I have to stay alert 24-7. A ring appeared in his eye. Sir Knight, I smiled. You have improved from the time of the tournament. Just don't destroy my office. I took a deep breath and dashed at Knight, I, punching directly to his face. The latter perfectly took a step to the side the moment I wanted to take action, getting behind me in an instant, reaching with his hand to tap me on the shoulder. I didn't stop and took another quick step, placing my feet on the wall. I knew that if I didn't touch my opponent, I shouldn't stop and let them touch me. You know what I find stupid in some shows? When the villain or the hero vanishes from the sheer speed, and instead of keeping moving, they show their astonishment and just move their head. Turning my head, I watched Night Eye, the man who could see the future, still standing there. I jumped and landed in front of him before walking slowly toward him. I gave him a quick jab that would knock anyone out, but he could easily turn his head and slip away. I lowered my hand quickly, tapping him on the shoulder. He. A wide smile appeared on my face as I moved his shoulder and took a step back, changing my posture, trying to bring him down and pin him from the shoulder. Night I didn't resist and was brought down. I thought that I got him, but he flipped in the air a few times before landing on his feet. Your martial arts SK asterisk LLS aren't half bad. Where did you learn them? Asked Night I, tapping his glasses back. You haven't seen half bad yet, getting a bit excited. I let my aura slip, covering my whole body, releasing pressure that made the clock move away, activating my Sharingan. With this, even if he could see the future, I could predict his reactions and change my actions accordingly to bring him down. I then punched at him. The taller guy jumped in the air, holding onto the ceiling. Before I could jump along with him, he said. The test was for you to touch me. You passed already. It's over. My aura calmed down, and my eyes turned black-purple again. I won't lie. I was a bit disappointed to test my Sharingan against his eye that could see the future. A perfect reaction versus pre-reaction. You have potentials to become a hero. But you have one major flaw, he said as he landed on his feet. Which is? I asked. Maybe I should buy some martial arts knowledge. You're rushing it too much. You could have gotten me in the beginning if you approached me slowly. Huh. I tilted my head, not understanding. Night I said, lift your hand. I opened my palm and said, what do you want? I'm going to punch it, and try not to let me, he said. That was easy. Even though he could see the future, I was faster. He at first gave me a fast punch, and I easily took my hand away. You made it. How about this one? He said, giving me a slow fist. I was a bit confused at first. Seeing that fist approaching my palm, I quickly moved it away. But he followed my palm, and his fist landed. See, sometimes, you don't have to be in a rush. He said, taking his fist back. Now, stay in the corner. As he said that, Mirio entered with a big smile on his face. He was wearing a hero costume of a white tight shirt that had one million on its chest, blue pants, and a red cap. What's the million for? Asked Night Eye. It's my dream. I don't want to be famous or have money. Saving one million people will be enough for me. Mirio stated his dream with a broad smile. I see. Night Eye smiled. That's indeed a very good goal. Smiling, Mirio replied. Thank you. He then looked at me, saying, So you guys did the test, or should I wait for my turn? No, it's already your turn, said Nidai, inviting Mirio for a touch. I could now get a glimpse of why Mirio ended up turning into a very strong hero before graduation. It's not just his potentials. But training with Nidai, who was very fast and could predict the future, would result in that. Mirio stood up facing Nidai, not asking if he could break the furniture. After all, he could pass through things. Mirio attacked when Night Eye invited him. The former's fist went by the latter. Before Mirio could become untouchable, Night Eye gave him a slight stroke on the chin. Mirio didn't take that well and kept trying. Night Eye already went behind him. Mirio looked left and right for him. Night Eye didn't attack or something since Mirio hadn't materialized. Smart, I admitted. If only I could implant Mirio's quirk into myself, that would be awesome. But again, I didn't need that. I had mana, chakra, chi, and magic now. To train magic, I just needed to buy knowledge and practice spells. I had practiced the basic spells the other days, 
letting out fire from my hand and lifting things from a distance. However, not only was it mana draining, but also mentally draining. But what I noticed, the more mental resistance you had, the stronger the magic you could use. But that was a talk for another time. Now, I enjoyed the show. A man who could see the future versus an untouchable person. Mirio sank to the ground, and Night Eye smirked. Mirio appeared from the wall, jumping behind Night Eye, trying to get him into a lock. Night Eye twisted his body, sending Mirio flying toward the wall. I quickly moved and caught him before something bad could happen. Thank you, said Mirio. Whatever, go and get him, I replied as I pushed him to his feet. Having spent most of my time training in my room had made me deprived of entertainment. Seeing Mirio and Night Eye fighting was like seeing a wrestling show. Now, I could understand why people love sports festivals at UA. You pass, said Night Eye as Mirio stopped. The blonde was breathing heavily, but he smiled. Night Eye then said, Get your hero costumes. We have a patrol to join. How did you know? asked Mirio as he turned his head. Nobody had told us yet, or told Night Eye yet. The door was opened, the pretty blue assistant entering. She said, Sir Night Eye, the police are asking for you to come to the fourth address for help with a hostage situation. On my way, Night Eye said. It seemed like it's time for me to get my hero attire as well. Time to get some real life experience. Chapter 28 I was in Night Eye's sports car. It was moving quickly while surrounded by police cars. Hostage situation, isn't that the worst of all of them? I thought to myself. And he is taking us with him. Hold on. His power allows him to see someone's future from a third person point of view, and he needs some time to recharge it. So, in order to see the future, he needs me or Mirio. Given his expression, he didn't see my far future. I mean, if he did, he would have said something. My future isn't that bright after all. I turned my eye and looked at Mirio to see his face. He still had that smile, but there was a drop of sweat going slowly down his cheek. So even he was nervous for his first time. We soon arrived in front of a store, the cop's cars surrounding the building with the policemen holding their guns and aiming forward. But none dared to make an early move. At the store's entrance walked a large man of three meters height with the head of an ant. His skin seemed to be made of some tough matter. A mutated human or a mutated ant with intelligence may be capable of lifting 50 times its weight or more depending on if the quirk been trained. Other than that, ant skin's covered by a bone layer. If you think about it, the strongest creatures weren't the biggest ones, weren't dinosaurs. But insects, since their power is innumerous compared to their size. If a giant elephant was spider-sized, then it would be the weakest insect and the slowest. We either do this the easy way or the hard way, said the humanoid ant. You give me a way out, money, a boat to the border. In exchange, you get your hostages. The more time you take thinking, more people will die. I only have ten remaining. Ten remaining. Didn't this mean he had K asterisk led some already? The policeman approached Night Eye and said, an hour ago there were twelve. Night Eye opened his eyes widely with eyes furrowed. He placed a hand on my shoulder saying, don't do anything. Wait, did he see the future and saw me doing something? In that case, I wonder what did trigger me to do so. It could also be a normal protocol for new interns not to interfere in serious situations. We can negotiate this, Night I said, lifting his hand. The ant man looked at his wrist. It seems that it's about to get 1300 hours o'clock. A man got to keep his word. Shortly after seeming to think about it, the ant man entered the store and grabbed a woman from the hair. He then lifted her with one hand, his other hand ready to pierce its neck. I hated gore scenes. I was a human, with a human brain that wanted to protect me from pain. One of the pain forms was the precept pain. I knew my conscience would bother me somehow, and it felt painful to watch the lady getting K asterisk led without being able to do anything. Night I was the first to move as he rushed. I activated my Sharingan, finger glowing in yellow as sunlight was being pulled, and I pointed my finger forward. A finger-sized yellow beam left my hand. What I aimed for wasn't the villain, but the hair of the woman from which the villain held her. I have to tell, she'd hate me in the future for one reason. The beam pierced her hair, burn spread, giving her a bald front haircut. The beam didn't stop here. It hit the ant man's shell, creating an explosion on its shoulder, huge crack with blood spreading. He withstood that. I thought as I opened my eyes widely. Maybe I should pour more chi. Wait, unnecessary. Night I appeared in front of the huge humanoid, lifting the woman and throwing her in our direction. I jumped in the air and caught her, before putting her down. The ant man furrowed his insect like eyes and punched toward Night Eye, who, with a martial art move, flipped the villain to his back. The villain, 
not seeming to take damage from that, stood up, lifted a police car easily, and roared. The policemen shot him from every direction. I opened my hand, my mana changing to fire as it wrapped my hand, before it turned into a fireball that hit the ant on his eye. What part of not do anything do you understand? Said Night Eye, smiling. He bent down and kicked the villain on his leg, flipping him along the car. Then with a quick punch, Night Eye sent the ant man flying to hit a wall. Night Eye then stood up and played with the seals in his hand. Hold up. Wasn't his ability to see the future? I thought. Why is he this strong? When the villain fell, a policeman threw an electrical net at him, electrocuting him unconscious. They then arrested him. Mirio appeared rolling from the other side of the building, guiding the hostages. Apparently, he had slipped to help them when we were talking to the villain. Night I looked at me with a serious frown. I scratched my chin and avoided eye contact. It's not like I wanted to do that. It just felt too painful to watch that I had to do something. Why did you move? He asked. I didn't know what you meant by that. I replied. Excuse me. I mean, by not moving, you meant not moving from my place, not moving a muscle. If it's the latter, then I'd end up dead since. You know, not moving means no breathing. No breathing means no life. And technically, I didn't move from my place, I said. Night Eye's serious expression was replaced by a scoffing laugh. He took a deep breath and said, I meant staying in your place. I should have said something about not using aura attacks. Night Eye turned his head to the woman whose hair was burned. Good job on saving her. But next time, work according to the responsible hero you are with. I nodded and said, You knew I'd do that even when you asked me not to do anything? Mirio stood behind me and looked at Night Eye. Night Eye said, Now, get back to the agency and take a rest. Bubble Girl will take you to where you guys would be resting. Aye, aye, Captain. Mirio said. I nodded. We then headed back to the agency. Night Eye left us with his assistance while he dealt with some papers with the police. I wished I could stay with him so I could see how much money he made. But that didn't matter now because I was about to make money. The bubble girl drove us in her car to a villa and gave us keys to our room. Then she asked us to rest for the remaining days we'll have more night patrols. Another day passed. When it was guaranteed that my 24 hours effect with night I had done, I decided to move on the plan. After the day, we went back to sleep at our residence. When I was alone, I wore my pajama, created a shadow clone, and let it sleep in my place. I then used transformation jutsu, changing my look, and went outside. Chapter 29 It was night, and I was outside, taking on the appearance of Dom Toretto. I needed to take on an appearance that would fit doing underground deals, and I couldn't think of a better. Meanwhile, I spent a bunch of money buying jewelry that people sold for pocket change. The only thing with value was gold in the system, and that's the only thing I couldn't buy. But still, with my golden coins, I could bring them to reality and sell them. It's just not as profitable as selling those expensive stones. Dash 1000 coins, I bought a lot of stuff, but it caused my storage to get full. Luckily, I could upgrade. Storage has been upgraded. Storage has been upgraded. Dash 20,000 coins. Now, my storage had the space of a warehouse. I could conduct business now. As I was walking down the street, I was wondering where I could find these guys. No choice then. I opened the system again and went to world level 3, looking for a certain spell. Very soon, I found someone offering it for sale, a spell of heat vision, a first circle spell. I bought it for 3,000 coins. Standing next to an abandoned building with a few cars around it, I opened my hand. My mana took on the shape of magical symbols and went in my eyes. The spell took some time since I was a newbie mage with little practice. The colors changed from normal to red and orange. I could see inside that building a bunch of people holding bats, surrounding someone on his knees. A man was talking to the man who was on his knees and stepped on his head before lighting a cigarette. I knew I shouldn't interfere, but I decided to do so anyway. I needed some information about the underground world, and no one was better than mobsters. Staring at the top of the building, I took a large leap, finding myself on the top. The Heaven Leap SK asterisk LL surely came in handy. When I landed on the roof, a bunch of guys dressed in Yakuza clothes were surrounding a poor man who was about to piss himself. They turned their heads and stared at me. Who are you? Someone asked, pointing the bat toward me, clenching his teeth and giving me a look that said he'd kick my ass if I got on his nerves. Hi. I'm here to ask about directions. I said, raising my hand and smiling. The guys clenched their teeth as if they were offended. They seemed like bad guys, and I was honest about asking them directions. K asterisk LL him, the one in Leeds said tapping his hand with the head of the bat. The others surrounded me, 
holding their clubs. Once I gave them a glance, it came to me that these guys weren't ordinary. They were trained, and the bats in their hands were heavier than 100 kilos, yet they could lift them easily. I should have cosplayed as Jackie Chan. It's not too late, though. A small frown filled my face as I thought about which ability I should display. Aura. Night I will find out immediately if any of these guys got arrested. Same for the sunray beam. That's it. Pure shinobi martial arts. I looked at the first row of guys. Opening my hand in front of me and controlling my chi, I aimed my hand forward. A giant palm with a size of three meters left me, and it hit a row of the guys, pushing them flying in the air. I could see that they bled. Holy shit. I didn't expect this technique to get this strong after my cultivation broke through, even though I held back. The first row of gangsters fell in random directions. Some fell on the ground, some on the roof of other buildings. But I was certain that most of the damage they suffered was from the palm technique. What's that quirk? The one in the lead asked. Two men surrounded me and hit me with the bats. My muscles tensed and the bats bent. Despite the fact my body didn't get harmed, I felt a bit of pain. These motherfuckers used metallic bats. I jumped and spread my legs, giving them kicks in the face, sending them flying a few meters away. Want to find out? I asked as I moved at a blinding speed, appearing in front of the mobs, striking them down to their knees, leaving only the leader of the gang and the person who had his ass kicked. After a thought, I wondered why this man was being surrounded by the gangsters. He may have made a shady deal, and that's why he couldn't ask the police for help. He may be an enemy to them, so it's better to stand aside. Actually, the leader of the gang dropped his bat, raising his hand, and said, I know the city very well. What are you looking for? I wrapped my arm around him and grabbed him to my chest, bullying him as I choked him. I'm looking for an underground arena or a trading center. I see. You're new. You should see the nearest red light district or look for the black spots of the Chisaki family. They are quite known. If you go to the north, you'll hear loud metallic music, he said. Now, it's only fair that you leave me. Fair? How is it fair that all of your men got their asses kicked and you didn't? Also, what did this guy do? I asked, pointing to the man, thinking if I should let him out. Here asterisk ped my daughter. He replied with an expression between rage, disgust, and sadness. I suddenly felt guilty for interrupting a personal justice. I bowed to him and said, I sincerely apologize. He put his hand behind his head, saying, it's me who should apologize. We attacked you first. I thought you were with him, but I surprised you first. But we shouldn't have been so rude. No hard feelings. Let me fix your guys first. I replied, before jumping high in the air, feeling a bit of embarrassment. I looked for the men who fell from the high ground first. I couldn't believe I'd do this. But I used my healing potion on them before their case could get any severer and they die. Before they could stand up, I left, going in the direction of the north. Once I stopped, I found myself in front of a huge building, fancy cars stopping in front of it. A bunch of hot women were standing on the side. Blondes, brunettes. Short, tall medium, human, look like a human, non-human. I took a few deep breaths, my chest tightening and my heart beating faster. There was an invisible force that told me to pick a girl from there and spend the night with her. Why does it feel like I logged in a hentai site? I thought as I activated my thermal vision spell, those girls becoming just red images. Chapter 30 I ignored the girls, especially the cute one with bunny ears, and got inside the building. The bodyguard gave me a glance and didn't stop me. From the face I had, it seemed that I belonged to places like this. That bunny girl was cute. But Nijire is cuter. I thought, before making my way to the elevator. I entered. Two girls behind me were kissing, and I ignored them. The underworld. I thought as the elevator stopped, and I entered a very large hall. Loud music was playing. The people surrounded a large cage where two guys were punching the hell out of each other, using their quirks illegally. I found an empty couch. Seeing that no one was sitting there, I took a seat. Next to me was a bottle of alcohol. I ignored it and looked forward. The people had some tickets in their hands that they waved while screaming at the cage. Because I'm a cultivator, I could see the content of the tickets clearly. There were numbers, the number of the ticket, the bet, the money, and the odds. Gambling. I thought, observing how the fighters fought each other. One was a large man with bulging muscles. The other was a small man who had ears and a tail of a rat. The huge man punched and the rat guy slipped easily between his legs. The rat guy jumped and kicked to the face of the huge man, doing nothing but a little damage and pissing off the larger guy. You should have gone for the jaw, I muttered, 
sighing heavily as the large guy jumped on the rat, who barely managed to run to the corner of the cage, and now he was being cornered. From this angle, the size was going to win against agility. A drunk brown-haired woman stood in front of me, blocking my view with her exposed big booty. I tried to move my head to the other side to watch the fight. I was here to take advantage of the gangsters, not to be taken advantage of by a hooker. But God, I must admit, I underestimated the level of difficulty of ignoring them. The dancing drunk lady lowered her hips to my crotch level and started dancing. I won't lie, I got a big boner. Someone save me please, I thought. I didn't want my first virginity load to be wasted on a lap dance and I tried to pull away. As if hearing my prayer, a man with shark skin, an angry expression, grabbed the girl from the arm and pushed her away. He then stared angrily at me, saying, you're hitting on my girl. I narrowed my eyebrow, confused as hell. If there is a type of guys I hate the most, it would be this one. They pretend to be extremely jealous, let their chicks do whatever they want, and then blame the guy whom their chicks threw themselves at. She was hitting on me, I replied with a smug smile. If you didn't stop her, she'll be giving me a blowjob. You want to die? He asked, grabbing me from my collar, my face on his. If you don't retrieve your hand, one of us will meet God today. I replied, not backing away. I could notice a shake in his hand. Huh? He was just playing tough after all. All bark, but no bite. He smirked and said, Oi, oi, you know who I am. Are you a bastard kid of mine that am I supposed to know about? I replied, remembering that I had the appearance of a middle-aged man. That statement had some weight. Let's go to the cage, you asshole. The winner gets a blowjob, said the girl who provoked this fight. If there was someone who deserved their ass getting kicked, it would be this girl. You know what, fuck it. I turned to her and punched her unconscious on the face. May she learn her lesson. The guy opened his eyes widely before pointing his head to the cage. Having nothing better to do, I walked to the cage. A new fight initiated. Our sharky against a random guy who slapped his girl, said the DJ who was playing music. Place your bets. It could be easy money. I got into the cage in the corner. You may be new, but you are allowed to use your quirk. Sharky said, standing in the corner facing me and jogging. Water was gathered from the air and danced around him in waves. A show off. I had a hunch that the time with that girl was just a step up. It didn't change the fact that my blood boiled a bit, and that I was another person who wouldn't take responsibility. I weaved a series of hand signs of the jutsu that I bought, before pointing my fingers forward. From my fingers, a few lightning bolts flew, creating a lightning net. Our sharky started buzzing before falling unconscious. The people on the sides, those who had gambled, raised their arms happily, while some destroyed their tickets. After all, a non-known person against a known underground celebrity in the cage had fewer odds. I walked out of the cage, some hands trying to touch my muscles while cheers filled my ears. A man appeared in my way. He was quite tall, had black hair, and wore a curl mask with a black suit. A classical Yakuza appearance if you don't count the mask. You seem to have an interesting ability to shoot lightning. Do you want to fight? He asked. Kai, I recognized him. I shook my head. There is no way I'd risk fighting against a one-touch man. I'm not a fighter, I said. He looked at Sharky, who was being lifted by someone. Yet you defeated one of our best. What are you then? A dealer. I replied. Drugs? He asked. I found a chance to sell my stuff to the Yakuza. Jewelry, diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. I said, stating the cheapest items in dimensional trading. So a thief, he said. I shook my head. No. I've got too much that I wouldn't be ignored if it's theft. What's your job? I trade. My quirk is dimensional subspace. It helped me do underground deals across the borders. And I'm looking to sell my stuff for a good time here. Dimensional space? He tilted his head, mocking. Are you taking me for dumb? You just shot lightning. I could store lightning, fire, earth, and water attacks as well. I replied, before opening my hands. A diamond piece appeared in my hand. It was quite big. Kai examined it. You can store humans? Non-living beings only, I replied. The music is quite loud. Kai put his finger in his ear, and he said, let's talk over there. Chapter 31 I was currently in a large white room that had expensive furniture covering it. I looked at the paintings on the wall, thinking that they were very high in price. So, this is what they call a VIP room, I remarked. So, you are a seller with a dimensional quirk? Asked Kai. Although he was wearing a mask, his tone showed that he was interested in my supposed quirk. I nodded. I was here to do business, a one-time deal. That's quite a rare and interesting quirk. I've never heard about it. 
but you discover something new every day. He asked, what's your name? Dom, I replied. Dom, I'm Kai. You look foreign, yet your Japanese is flawless. Do you know about me? A Yakuza boss, I assume, I replied, crossing one leg over the other. I wanted to appear comfortable with this kind of deal. The last thing I wanted was to appear as an amateur, which I was. That's correct, Kai replied. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Do you want to work for me? I'm sorry if I come off as rude, but I'm what you call a freelancer, and I don't like to be tied to anyone. That's too bad, Kai replied with a long sigh. At least we can hire you to do jobs, right? If you have a good price, why not? I replied. Don't worry, we can always discuss that, he replied, smirking inside. Although his eyes were fixed on me like a hawk, he seemed pleased. As if I couldn't tell he could modify people, or that he had someone with a hypnotic voice in his gang. Also, I hope you don't mind me examining your stuff, he said. I could tell what he wanted. I picked up a diamond, a jewelry that cultivators could make by pressing coal in their hands or by shooting hot flames somewhere. In the worlds of Wuxia, there were plenty of these stuff, and they were millions of years old. Here's a sample, I said, waving my hand, causing a diamond and a ruby to appear from thin air. I tossed them to him. Do you have a phone number? Asked Kai as he caught them. No, but I have an email for business, I replied. It was true. Before coming here, I knew that I'd need some way to conduct business. Buying a new phone didn't seem suitable, and it could raise suspicions with Nijire. So, I ended up creating an email. Also, I didn't have enough money to buy a new phone. I see, Kai replied, reaching into his pocket and giving me a business card. I then gave my email. He promised to contact me once he was done appraising my stuff. When he asked how much I could provide, I said half of the warehouse share if I left the country and came back. When he asked how much I had now, I said I'd tell him later. I then left the black spot. As soon as I got out, I went to a hiding spot, turned myself into another human, before going back to my residence at Night Eye's house. The shadow clone opened the window for me. Good God, that was a shitty day. I muttered to my shadow clone, who vanished into a puff of smoke. I took on his place, lying on the bed. I started thinking about the hot girls I had seen in the red light district, or that one female who gave me a lap dance. I couldn't hold it. I grabbed a paper towel, and I relieved myself. How did I relieve myself? That wasn't a question that I'd like to answer. After I was done, feelings of regret took over me. I put my elbow on my head, and I thought about the stupid things I'm doing. I'm wasting my time at U.A. trying to make a career instead of training. But in the long run, U.A. offers me a career boost a smooth path to making millions if not billions of dollars, and a good place that could lead me to steal DNA samples. And those dollars could be turned into coins that I could use as resources. Also, I could leave U.A. as soon as I get my hero license. There was no need to spend three years here when I could get my license earlier if I sent a request in my second year. I raised my hand and looked at it, thinking how just relieving myself was eye-opening on the choices that I should make. I'm a cultivator. I don't need sleep as much as others. At some stage, I won't need to poop, or even age, I muttered as I sat cross-legged. A bottle of wine appeared in my hand, which happened to be an item to strengthen my body, and a spiritual stone appeared in my other hand. Then I closed my eyes and absorbed all of the energy and transformed it into me. I'll take a nap during the day, but at night, I'll grind and make deals. XXX I had two large cups of espresso in my hand as I entered Nine Eyes Agency with Mirio. I was sipping repeatedly, trying to keep my eyes wide open. Someone didn't have a good night of sleep, Bubble Girl said. What's the matter, Kinshiro-san? It's difficult to fall asleep when I change my bed. Oh, I get you. It happens to me as well, she replied. You should have brought some melatonin with you. Oh, I see how that would work. Thank you, I smiled at her. Please, don't mention it. Consider me your big sis, she said. She was too nice despite being here for one day. Thinking that I'd stay longer, I didn't mind. Maybe it's the old technique that firms use. We are family here. Never had one, but I'll try, I replied. What about me? Asked Mirio, pointing with his thumb to himself. You can say so as well, she replied, and Mirio nodded happily. But don't mistake it for babysitting. I and Mirio chuckled. Anyway, she said, we are going on patrol. All right, I said, cracking my fingers. The next hours... I spent my time doing normal patrol around the city with Bubble Girl and Mirio. The city was peaceful at this time of the day. Most of the criminals, I presumed, were asleep by this time. There was a reason why heroes had something called night shifts. 
Anyway, nothing major happened other than a mugger stealing an old lady's back. But Mirio stopped him easily. When I arrived back at the agency, we met Night Eye, who told us good job. And then, he took us to a gym, telling us to train our muscles and abilities. I appreciated the time, and I took a meditating pose. What are you doing? Asked Night Eye. My quirk is about energy manipulation, I replied. Don't be surprised if you see me flying one day. Ha ha. He chuckled, replying. Then what's next? Breaking through the shackles of reality and becoming immortal? I pouted, as if I had squeezed a juicy lemon on my tongue. Night I had no idea he was right. But that level would require me to act like a spiritual herb for decades, if not for a century or so. But it was achievable. After finishing my training, I felt that I was halfway to Earth Realm Level 3, quite a progress. My mana also increased because of the increase in my physical strength, which worked as a foundation. I stood up, went to grab a bottle of water, and checked my second email. There was a mail from Kai. Our appraiser said your stuff is real and pure. When are you free for a business deal? I smiled, smelling the money in my pocket. Tonight. After the hero's night schedule is over. He then emailed me his villa's address. Chapter 32 With my heart beating uncomfortably, I walked to the Yakuza's villa. I was there to conduct business. Sending a shadow clone was not an option since they couldn't access the storage. Better not get caught, I thought, before looking at my reflection on the car. There was no way I would get caught if the transformation jutsu was still in effect. Still, I should have purchased a face-changing mask as a security measure. I stood in front of the gate. A man dressed in black approached and greeted me. You must be Dom, he inquired. I nodded. Please, come in. The young master is waiting for you. He bowed slightly and gestured with his hand for me to enter. Okay. I replied and entered. Observing the villa's grandeur, I wondered about its cost. Guards were everywhere all dressed in black, engaging in various activities such as smoking, playing games, and even singing. They seemed to enjoy each other's company immensely. Upon entering a large room, I saw Kai sitting with one leg over the other. Turning my head, I noticed an old man with messy hair sitting next to Kai. Dom, this is my appraiser. He'll verify if your items are genuine, Kai said. How much can you pay? I asked. Let's see. Around $1.5 million. Can you bring items worth that amount? He replied, leaning forward. I opened my hand, producing diamonds and rubies worth 1,000 coins from my storage and placing them in front of me. Considering the discount, I had acquired them for 800. The appraiser's eyes widened. Their shock was not about my ability, but about the wealth laid out before their eyes. Do you have a bank account? Kai asked. I expect to be paid in cash, as I've stated in my email, I replied. The appraiser stepped forward and began examining my items. I expected you to say so, he said, scratching his hair. Then he waved his hand, and a bald man entered, holding a bag, which he opened in front of me. My eyes gleamed at the sight of the cash, but I pretended to be unaffected. You can count it, Kai suggested, gesturing with his hand. No need, I replied. You trust me, he asked, seeming amused. I trust that if you want more deals, you won't resort to such tactics, I replied. You surely know what you're doing, he said, sighing. Are you certain you don't want to work for me? I could use a man with your abilities. As I've said, I prefer not to be tied to any group. Whatever, he said, standing up and walking toward me, extending his hand for a handshake. When I looked at his hand, I noticed it wasn't gloved. My heart raced faster. Was he attempting to modify me somehow to work for him? He must think I'm new to the city and unaware of his quirk. If not for the memories of my previous life, I would have been easily deceived. Yet, without those memories, I wouldn't have found myself in this situation. I looked at him with cold eyes and put on sunglasses to hide the Sharingan I had just activated. What are you thinking? I asked. What's the matter? Afraid of a little handshake, he teased. Without gloves, from the famous overhaul? I countered, attempting something I had never done before. Since Kai was making eye contact, I channeled my chakra into my eyes, trying to peer into his mind. He wasn't guarded, so it shouldn't have been difficult. However, I had never attempted to use Jinjutsu before. He raised an eyebrow, amused. If I wanted you dead or something, I could have done it a long time ago. I just forgot my gloves, he explained. Looking into his eyes, mine began to hurt. All I could do was think about placing him in Jinjutsu, hoping my eyes would do the rest subconsciously. I found part of my consciousness had transferred, and I found myself in a dark space surrounded by images. It was as if I were seeing through Kai's eyes in one of those images. Show me your plan, I commanded. 
Kai extended his hand, and I commanded the illusionary me to shake it. As I told you, I didn't plan to K asterisk LL you, Kai said, as the other me fell to his knees. I just need to make sure you're not an undercover cop and to know your source. Kai had just forced Dom to his knees and simulated breaking his legs, inducing unimaginable pain. I allowed him to see that. So, I'm inside his brain, able to subject him to any jinjutsu I wish, even putting him to sleep with my thoughts. However, my head hurts if he resists, I thought. I decided to maintain the illusion a bit longer. I work as a mercenary and get paid in gold. But I buy jewelry since it's smaller and easier to store, the illusionary me said, glaring at Kai. I've inflicted an incurable disease on you. If you want the cure, work for me. I can't let someone of your caliber go, he said, smirking. Clearly, if this man desired something, he would stop at nothing to obtain it. Let's try this. Immerse him in a baby shark video on loop, I thought, transferring my ideas into waves that infiltrated Kai's mind, trapping his consciousness. What the hell? Kai muttered, looking around, confused. I exited his mind, returning to my body. Kai stared blankly into space. I couldn't K asterisk LL him now, as that would alert others, or even attempting to K asterisk LL him would awaken him from the illusion. Besides, K asterisk Ling him would only free him from pain. True revenge required him to feel pain and regret. I turned to two men who had been present and knocked them out with a chop to their necks. I retrieved three super sticky balls from my storage, covered in a bag that would dissolve with water. Due to Orochimaru's modifications, we could have different colors. I chose yellow. I placed them on the ground and poured water on them. Then, I maneuvered Kai into a compromising position, securing his head to one ball. I tied his hands in a reverse position so he couldn't touch anything and placed his feet next to his head, sticking them to another ball. I should wake him from the Jinjutsu, I mused, looking at Kai, then stepped on his balls. Someone of my strength was the last person he would want stepping on his nuts. Kai's eyes widened, red veins surrounding them. Before he could grasp the situation, I used the body flicker jutsu to escape, bursting away at incredible speed. Once I was alone and no one was around, I used the transformation jutsu to change my appearance into that of a casual Yakuza I had seen earlier with the guards. Chapter 33 After finding myself in a random hall in Kai's mansion, I walked casually while pretending to be one of his guards. So, this is what it means to be a ninja. Luckily, I have knowledge of sneaking and stuff. I thought as I walked down. Enough with the ninja stuff. I needed to get out of here as soon as possible, and I needed magical things. Casting a heat vision spell, I looked through the walls for the guards. But soon, I stumbled upon a secret sight. A girl in a cage was hugging her puppet. She seemed to be surrounded by people who were conducting research at this time. They were holding tablets and writing things. That's what I assumed given their movement. Should I leave that girl and leave out? Maybe it's for the best. After a couple of years, Midoriya and Mirio would save her, right? I thought as my steps halted. A couple of years, getting tortured. I sighed, starting to hate myself already. Two years is too much, so fuck the cannon. I thought as I walked toward a steel gate. There was a password I needed to enter before getting in. The password was simple. Magic. I could do that to small things. Besides, if I got her hair, man, you know, she can rewind people to non-existence. Her DNA would be worth more than overhaul. Besides, there is knowledge of cloning sold on world level 3, and so, whatever. I focused my mana into the lock and forced it to open. Then I got inside, hands in my pocket. A scientist-like man looked at me. I nodded at him, and he did the same before holding a paper and writing. Anyway, I walked among the creepy old guys, thinking if I should call the police on them. I could record the place and publish it online. However, the video would get traced back to me. You know, the programmers had made sure that every device leaves a certain print on the code. Nowadays, it's easy to decode the video and know from where it was uploaded, when it was recorded, what's the name of the device, and many things. So, it wasn't wise. I leaned on the wall and I opened the system. I need an invisibility scroll. I typed. A couple of minutes later, I got someone offering it to me for 5k. I negotiated the price with him for 5 minutes, lowering it to 3.5k. And so, I got a scroll that could be used one time. I kept walking, soon finding a little girl with white hair, red eyes, a horn on her forehead, sitting and holding a puppet. She was around 4 years old, and she looked so cute. Around her arms and legs, there were many needle marks. Poor kid. Kai surely was trash for forcing a girl at this age to be his testing subject. Fuck the cannon. 
I deal with Kai once the vacation is over. I have enough coins to achieve that and money. Anyway, I approached the little girl. I activated my Sharingan, and I walked toward her. She lifted her head and looked at me. Seeing that I stared at her for a long time, she smiled. Your eyes are red, like mine, she said. It was a wonder that she managed to smile despite the pain she was in. I activated my Jinjutsu, getting into her mind space, intending to make her sleep. My chakra released a signal that made her brain act the way I liked, and she fell unconscious. I held my eye, feeling a bit of hurt. But then, using the Sharingan wasn't painless. And your eyes get itchy, plus your brain would get a lot of information thanks to the ability to record the smallest movement. Anyway, I lifted the white-haired girl and put her on my back. A man with a large belly, thick mustache, and messy hair ran toward me. He yelled, What are you doing? Put down the test subject. We still need more blood. Test subject, you say. I turned and looked at him. Have I ever mentioned that I hated child abusers before? No. Anyway, not wasting time, I punched the man in the face, sending him flying to the wall. I was certain that he'd have a brain stroke, and for the first time, I didn't want to help someone whom I just took down. Looking at the wall near me, I went to it and punched it, creating a human-sized hole that I went through. I then took the invisibility talisman out of my storage, turning myself and the little girl invisible. I then started running with incredible speed. The guards and many people with quirks no one knew about were rushing to the lab. I, on the other hand, didn't get out first. I went to the room where I met Kai. He was in that funny stance I had left him at, and he was pissed off. I know what's the best revenge. Kai looked at me, holding Aerie on my shoulder. He was so confused, and he wasn't to blame as I had been taking the appearance of one of his men through transformation jutsu. I waved my hand in front of his arms, covering them in lightning, controlling my power enough not to cause damage to his head or the ground. It was disturbing to see that happening to him. But after seeing that they had a little girl as a testing pig in the lab, abusing her, I couldn't allow such a person to get away lightly. Kai screamed. What the hell have you done? This, I said, before I stomped on the severed hands, crushing them flat. I then had my hand on his hair, pulling a few strands of them. I stored them in the system and then made my way out, using my footwork that doubled my speed, turning me into a blur. Once I was outside and far from the Yakuza's villa, I ended my transformation jutsu and turned invisible along with the white-haired girl whose name I forgot. Now that she was free, I thought about what I should do. Where should I take her? Put her in front of a church? That didn't work. Kai was a Yakuza, and every criminal around may know that she was his property. Take her to the cops? What if there was a corrupt one? I doubted that there could be underground fighting and organized crime in this city without a few corrupted cops and politicians. I'm going to take her to Night Eye, and I let him deal with her. But how could I approach him without exposing the fact I was doing illegal things? Transformed Shadow Clone seems to be a good answer since they have no future. 